In this lesson, we'll get into the details of an asset record and how we can use that information in our offense investigations. When we're in the middle of an offense investigation, we can, from the offense summary, jump into information about the asset. There are, however, some caveats. Curator will only create asset records for systems that are considered local to the environment, meaning that IP address is in a range covered by what we call the network hierarchy. Now, in this case, we're going to look at this particular asset by right-clicking on the IP or host name, scrolling down, and you'll see that there is an asset profile link available. By clicking that, we'll be taken into the asset database. The asset database can also be accessed via the asset tab from the interface. Simply clicking on that, and you'll be brought into what we call the asset profile view. The asset profile view will show a list of systems keyed by a unique identifier found in the ID column. You may see multiple IP addresses that are the same, but have separate asset IDs. This is normal. Consider an environment where you have dynamic addressing for workstations. A system that has a particular lease on an IP address may not be the exact system that had it the day before. Curator recognizes this and assigns a unique asset ID to the system. On the left-hand side of the Asset Database tab, you'll see Asset Profiles, which is the default view, Server Discovery, and VA Scan. Server Discovery allow us to go through the Asset Database and query for systems that match certain profiles. For instance, I could do a server discovery and look for all the web servers in my environment simply by querying the asset database for known web ports such as 80, 443, 8080, and others. VA scan allows us to go and schedule a vulnerability scan import or perhaps even kick off a live scan. The information pulled from that scan would then be imported into the asset database and correlated to the existing asset records or if we find new systems in the environment through the vulnerability scan, new asset records will be created. From this asset profile view, you can see that the assets are displayed in a similar way that we can look at events. The columns are sortable, and you have the ability to add search filters, much like you do with events. When we want to pull up the details of an asset record, we can, from the asset profile list, double-click the specific asset we're interested in. This will open up the Asset Detail form. From this form, you'll see an Asset ID number, which is this unique identifier in the Asset Database, an IP address, a MAC address if it's available, and again, this will be depending on what kind of logs that you're feeding into Curator. You'll also see a Network field. This Network field describes where in the network hierarchy this particular asset falls. Again, remember, you should only see asset profile records for systems that are local to your environment. However, there will be an exception to that when we talk about identity events. If there's a Windows machine involved here, we may see its NetBIOS name, and if we have host resolution enabled, you may also see the DNS name here. You'll notice there's a field called Last User. Curator will consume a variety of identity events, such as successful authentications to the system and log offs, etc. That information about a UID will be associated with an asset record. So you will see what the currently last seen UID associated with the record, and that will be found in the last user field. You also see a link to all users. This will pull up information about all users that have been associated with that system. If we have operating system information, you'll see that updated here in the asset details. The wait field describes the relative importance of the asset. And again, if there's vulnerability information, you may also see an aggregate CVSS score. Each asset record will also have a vulnerability section. Information about a vulnerability can only be brought in from an enterprise scanner, either through IBM's own scanner or through the use of a third-party scanner. In this example, we have an asset record with vulnerability data you'll see that there's a variety of columns associated with these vulnerabilities. The severity column corresponds to PCI's own ranking. The risk is the relative threat of this particular vulnerability. The service will show what system or service this particular vulnerability is associated with. You'll notice we have a lot associated with NetBIOS. 
The port shows the port number that this vulnerability was detected at. And then under the vulnerability column, our actual specific links will take you into the details for that vulnerability that was detected. You also have a details field which shows a description of the vulnerability and the CVSS base score for that specific vulnerability. Note that the vulnerability listing will only be as good as the last time the enterprise scan ran. So you'll need to keep that in mind when you're looking at this data. Going to the display dropdown, and if you select services, we'll provide you information on this asset record what services were detected running on that system. Now, QRadar can detect services in two ways. One is through simple passive collection of network flow information, either through the reception of NetFlow records or NetFlow compliant records, or through the use of QFlow sensors. QRadar can also import data from vulnerability scanners. This is called active scanning. In this case, you'll see several services listed here, both detected through passive scanning and through active scanning. That can be determined by looking at the column either last seen passive or last seen active and looking at the timestamp associated. You will also see a vulnerabilities column, which will show you if there are any current registered vulnerabilities with that particular port for this system. The products view will show the grouping of vulnerabilities for the asset grouped by product name. In this case, you see a listing for Unix, Samba, and OpenSSH. You also see then in the vulnerabilities column a multiple and a number in parentheses. That shows for, in this case, Samba 3.63 are at least four vulnerabilities associated with this product. The other options such as risk policies and Windows patches are only available if you also are licensed for and running QRadar Vulnerability Manager. In this unit, we covered the QRadar Asset Database. We showed that the Asset Database is populated by either the analysis of network traffic information or through the imports and reception of various logs. This asset information can help us in our investigations. 